Ay, sí. Cuernavaca, Morelos, close to Mexico City. Um, I'm going to, to present recent, a recent development on, in, in my lab and some ideas around this. Well, the main topic is that synthetic biology has been a common term as has been that is in the engineering of biology. So the uh, uh, problem is that engineering by definition requires scientific principles to design things that do not exist in nature. Uh, Luis Serrano draws the attention that thinking is one of the major drive, major uh, force in synthetic biology. So with that to make the synthetic biology ambitious ag agenda come true, we need an approach helping to unveil the principles governing the natural design of gene circuits and their evolution. We propose that to reach a deep, uh, deeper understanding of the alternative regulatory circuits, we could use a kind of a large scale comparative systems biology. Uh, for this, we need to compare functional analogous genes, the uh, different systems in different organisms, but they do the same function. So we could uh, have access to how the circuit has changed in evolution due to different adaptations for the lifestyles. So our ship this, uh, we need to undertake several challenges. For example, compiling a comprehensive repertory, repertoire of curated uh, bacterial regulatory networks. And this, some of these points I'm going to, to um, address in, in my talk. We also need to decompose the regulatory circuits into a set of system level elements and subsystems. We think we, uh, we want to profile the network properties that limit the organizational landscape. What I mean by organizational landscape, I'm going to, to mention it uh, afterwards in my talk. And we need to compare functional analogous, analogous circuits to identify alternative circuit designs. Well, the first challenge is to decompose the regulatory circuit, and we undertake this challenge a few years ago by developing the natural decomposition approach. This approach uh, it is a toy model of a regulatory network, bacterial regulatory network. And we decompose this using a set of roles. The first step in the natural decomposition approach is to identify the global regulator, the hubs in the network. There are no quantitative ways, so we use, we exploit the clustering coefficient distribution to identify an equilibrium point between modularity and centrality for each node. We call this a threshold, the kappa value, and we found that if all the nodes having out connectivity higher than the kappa value are hops, and those having less uh, connectivity, out connectivity less than kappa value are modular components. So going back to the previous network, if we remove the global regulators, we have some uh, weakly connected components or modules. We have a high end component, uh, we call it a mega module, and some disconnected, several disconnected nodes that we are li later found that are the vast machinery of the, of the cell. To study this uh, mega module, we remove all the structural genes. These are genes not encoding for um, regulatory products. Sorry. Yeah. How do you find, define? Yeah. A model is a set of closely interconnected components, okay? There is no function, we are only using the topology of the network, and afterward we are, to, we are going to validate how well these modules are functional related, okay? Where do you, do you put the, the, the Excuse me? Where do you put yeah, the threshold, the, the value. Yeah. How is computed? No, we are only, okay, let me go. We are, okay, you have the clustering distribution. We are defining the kappa value as the point where the, the change in the clustering coefficients equal the change in the centrality or connectivity, okay? So this is, this is the, the, the k in function, and we are looking for this point, okay? Where the slope is less one. Well, Can you define the clustering coefficient? Excuse me? Oh, okay. The cluster, okay. You have two different, okay. Uh, uh, everyone is, uh, know what out connectivity is, okay? Okay. Clustering coefficient 
is a measure of how related are the set of nodes. For example, if you have, this is a, this is a node, the blue one, and you have three friends. This is you, and you have three friends. Uh, let's suppose you are going to make a party. Okay? Clustering coefficient is a measure that how well is going to be your party. Why? Because if it is you, you have three friends, and the three friends is do not each know each other, your party is going to be barred. But if you have a clustering coefficient of one, and you have three friends, and all they know each other, then your party is going to be very good. <laughs> so that's it. An analogy to explain the clustering coefficient. It's a measure that is telling us how related are interconnected are a set of nodes. Okay? Okay? Oh, sorry. <laughs> The, okay, there are several uh, there are several aspects that you need to take into account. Newman's modularity is based on optimization. We don't want to do optimization. We we, are, we were looking for a natural way to obtain models, to exploit the, the natural um, organization of the network to extract the modularity. Also, we have a power law discrete free network, so we have hubs. These hubs are connecting. Oh, uh, more than the 90 percent of the network. So if you put one hop into a single model, this is going to relate a lot of models. So that does affect the Newman modularity. Okay, the Newman modularity is mainly used for community networks, not not having hops. So the objective here is that hops are not belonging to models, but they are interconnecting models. That is explained after was my talk. Okay, well, okay, so after removing all the structural nodes, we have a set of uh, regulatory cores, and then we recover the original node by adding back all the removed nodes, but using a set of rules. Now we add first all the structural nodes, but if these structural nodes are regulated, by, by I control by regulators in the same module, okay, the structural mode node is part of that module. But if the structural node is regulated by, by regulators in different modules, it is called an intermodular gene, and it enables the overlapping of modules. Finally, we add back all the global regulators and we recover the original network, but but each of these nodes is classified into one of four possible system level elements that are global regulators, modules, intermodular genes, and basal machinery that is not shown here for the sake of clarity. Now, using real data, this is one uh, the regulatory network, if we call I. We remove the global regulators. This is the basal machinery. We click connected components that are modules and the higher component. We focus in on the modules and the higher component. We identify the intermodular genes. We remove intermodular genes and we found a set of submodules. This is real data. This is a calling regulatory network. Now, what is the predictive power of kappa value? It's the, the hubs identified by the kappa value are real global regulators, biological defendants, global regulators. We, we review the, the, the literature. We found that for E. coli, Bacillus subtilis, and Ciglutamicum, we are recovering the most global regulators probably reported in review. In fact, only Ciglutamicum, we are missing one of them. We have some predictions. Uh, some of these predictions have been independently reported in, in previous studies, and we are recovering some sigma factors. Yeah? Sorry, predictions are things that you haven't found evidence for. We, we found that the uh, the, the method, the natural composition approach is telling that these genes could be global regulators. Some of one have been reported, others no. So actually the first two rows are predictions, but the, the, the first ones you have evidence for and the second one you don't have. 
Oh, yeah, for one of, for, for some of them, we have evidence for others, no. Okay? So, we then quantify the groups, and we for about the uh, analysis. Now, what is the biological relevance of intermodular genes? They could have one of two possible holes. The first is they act as a molecular multiplexer, enabling to reduce certain components under different conditions, or they make complete decisions by integration of response to different conditions. For example, MTB. MTB is an ammonium antiporter that is uh, working on the acidic conditions. On the acidic is not working, but this enables to introduce ammonium because this is precursor of glutamate that is fundamental for the gas resistance in E. coli. Okay, now this is an abstraction of the functional hierarchy found by the natural decomposition approach. We have three layers, coordination layer by global regulator, processing layer by models and basal machinery, and the integration layer. Now the major uh, conservation is in this layer, and these two are the most plastic. In fact, basal machinery is enriched with autologs, and intermodular genes and enriched with horizontal gene transfer. Wow. The next challenge is to combine a comprehensive repertoire of curated regulatory networks. And we developed Abasiatas. Abasiatas uh, was uh, the work of Adrian Campos. Why Atlas? Well, if we want to do comparative system biology, we need an inventory, an inventory of, um, of uh, systems, okay, to compare. We also need a unified repository providing the most complete created regulatory networks in an homogeneous format. We are using JavaScript object notation. This also enables to annotate genes who uh, don't have any homologous characterizers because we are using a guilty by association strategy. If you don't have a known function, but you are going to associate with other genes that have some function, you can assign this function. And finally, it's important for genome system, uh, scale system modeling because recently in a PNS paper, it was described that the topological variation in the systems has uh, affect the sensitivity of models. So, this is a pipeline. We are integrating data from RegulonDB, CoreGresNet, RegTransBase, DBTBS for Bacillus subtilis, literature. We are using goals to annotate our functions to have a controlled vocabulary among organisms. We do some meta creation. We do some, okay, one big problem by informatics is uh, the, the synonymous name for the genes. So we develop an algorithm to use a gene names. An important uh, point here is that in, in data set, regulatory data set for networks, do you have the you don't have the sequence of the gene. So, so you only have the name. So you, you can use the sequence to solve what is the entity of the gene. Okay, we also classify each regulatory interaction as supported by a strong, for example, for uh, footprinting, if you have you can have evidence that the regulator is binding to the upstream region or weak, for example, gene expression analysis. Okay, in currently in Arvasi we have 52 regulatory networks covering 52, bac 52 bacteria in nine species. Okay, now, the predictions of the natural decomposition approach uh, having all these organisms could be tested for universality in these organisms. We then found that all the organisms in Abasi have the four sentence level that the natural decomposition approach proposed and um, approximately in the same amount. We also found that as you, as, a, as a regulatory networks are curated, they grow and we uh, measure that growth as genomic coverage and we found that the number of systems grows linearly as the genomic coverage. We also found, for example, that gram-negative bacteria have more systems than gram-positive in non-redundant sets. This could be 
in, in previous Congress, someone tell me, okay, you, that could be only network incompleteness. However, when you analyze the genomic coverage, we look, we see that gram positive bacteria have more, uh, is more uh, complete than gram negative. So it's not incompleteness. The most incomplete are the na gram negative, but we have more systems for gram negative, for the most incomplete networks. Genomic coverage of the network. Is what? Genomic coverage of the network. The percentage of genes in the network related to the genome size. For example, if you have a genome size of 4,000 genes and you have 3,000 genes, you have 75% of genomic coverage. No, you don't, you don't have a model to identify how many interactions could be in a regulatory network. So that's a problem to measure incompleteness in regulatory networks. So what is 3,000 or 4,000? Uh, genes. 4,000 genes, for, exa for, for example. E. coli have around 4,000 genes, okay? Now, let's suppose that in your network, in your incomplete network, you only have 2,000 genes, 2,000 nodes. You have the 50 percent of the genomic coverage of the genome of E. coli. Right, so you do have information of regulation of these 2,000, 3,000 genes. Yeah, 2,000 genes, yeah. Right, so interaction between that, well, there could be more interaction that has not been discovered. So it's really an annotation thing. Annotation what? Annotation thing. So it's really about how much annotation you have for this particular mm, Yeah. Thing. Yeah, the problem is that, for example, you could have an artificial high uh, genomic coverage. If you have a HOP, mm -hmm. mm, a housekeeping sigma factor, you could have a genomic coverage of around 80% just having the sigma long of the sigma factor. But there are a lot of interactions missing between the, the genes. But your genome coverage will still be high and... Uh, yeah. But the network is not, co not, is not complete, it's incomplete. Because you need to know now, okay, you have a, lo a large genomic coverage, but you need to know how many interactions are between them, okay? Mm, possible. But That's a good that idea. That would give you an estimate of how good your data is, right? Mm, could be. We are we are working on other parameters that is the density of the network that relates the number of interactions uh, with respect to all the possible interaction in a complete graph. A complete graph is a graph that all uh, nodes are interconnected. Okay. Okay. Well, now. How this network incompleteness aff affects the, the uh, prediction of the natural decomposition approach? As we tell, we don't have a model to go up the networks, but we can perturb the network by remove interaction and genes. And we found the, the re interaction removal doesn't affect as much the predictions as genes removal. Genes removal. That's good for uh, regulatory networks having high uh, genomic coverage. And we also found the global regulators as the most concerned predictions, but intermodular genes as the most labeled predictions, okay? This could change as uh, new interaction are discovered. We also analyzed uh, uh, in a range of 10 years using different uh, ne uh, versions of the E. coli regulatory network, how the prediction changed, and we found that they are conserved. We also uh, use the evidence supporting the interactions to have different models for the network, and we found that the prediction has quite concept. In fact, we found that when you add uh, small RNAs, regulatory RNAs, we increase the number of modules, but the genomic coverage don't change. So it's possible that small regulatory uh, RNAs are uh, increasing the modularity of the network. 
Okay, a very, very quick of a base is, this is a base, you can browse here all the regulatory networks. You have global solitary models, modular genes, intermodular, basal machinery, some global properties. If you, if you can have a list of global properties of all the networks, if you click on module, for example, you obtain each module and the function annotation supported by the statistical key value. And if you click on one of these modules, you can see an interacting graph that you can uh, save to use in your own paper, change your daylight all and interact several options in, in this uh, database. Now, what is the take home message? The NDA is a highly robust and accurate method to embed the functional architecture of bacteria. Now, one important lesson from Abbasieta's construction is the poor diversity when reconstructing regulatory networks. So only 75% of the regulatory networks have low genomic coverage. So this is the best curated network that we have in the world. But the data is very, very incomplete. So the new challenge is a large scale reverse engineering of regulatory networks. And for that, we are using the wisdom of Crown inspired by Dream uh, for to identify several <coughs> of these uh, regulatory networks. Uh, now, some ideas regarding the futures. This is the work of uh, Carlos Cruz, that is over there. And he's a doctoral student, and he's working to profile network properties. Where is the organizational landscape? <laughs> Imagine that you have all the possible structures for these networks. See, this is the, the universe of all the possible structures. Given that there exists a uh, well-defined functional architecture, not all possible graphs could be a regulatory network, only a small set, and that is the organizational landscape that is where the evolution could select different networks. To identify this, we, or to study this, we want to do a property analysis. We think that organizational landscape is going to be delimited by a set. Here it's only two properties, but the, it's a high dimensional vector of properties that are delimiting where are the possible structures, okay? Some of them possible are uh, invariant properties. And we also want to compare different systems in different organisms to identify, for example, how in one system, the maltose uh, um, catabolic process is controlled by an activator and other is controlled by a repressor. The objective is to obtain principles governing the evolution of regulatory networks. The strategy for properties analysis is to uh, compute different properties for regulatory and other metabolic protein protein networks to do an multidimensional analysis and to identify invariant properties, similarity properties among organisms, among properties, and properties explain the major variability. We also do a literature review to identify more network properties and theoretical models. And one, uh, we are going to use the theoretical models as background to identify the properties profile for theoretical model to find what of this theoretical model is the best fit to regulatory order biological networks. Finally, the large scale reverse engineering is going carried out by Marco Tello, a, a bachelor in science student. And the idea is to obtain data for the Express and Geo and to normalize this data in, and to store this in a house gene expression database. One problem is that uh, many of most of the methods reported in the paper of Dream are not available or could not be used. Use. So we are going uh, to do a literature review to evaluate the methods, different methods, current methods, the state of both account used in Dream. And we want to select the top methods in and high usability. Now we apply the method of reason of crow and to implement the website when you can upload your own uh, expression data and to obtain the prediction for the organism of your preference. We also we are going to define the gold standard for E. coli, bacillus simplex, and mycobacterium tuberculosis that are, we have strong models in Abasi curated. And we are going to storage our predictions in Abasi Atlas prediction. We are going to maintain the database separated because we are speculating about using the network properties, the, the um, idea that we are going to learn about the network properties 
to prone the predictions and improve the predictions using the knowledge that we have of the topology of the network. Well, this is my last slide. Thank you to Juan Escocia, Marco Tello, Miguel Ibarra, and Andrés provided the Coinovaterium Glutamicum more recent data and funding from Papit Unami. Thank you very much for your attention. We are using those exactly for that reason. We want to use a common vocabulary among organisms. Gene ontologies are a very good vocabulary. So the idea is to identify models, annotate the function, and then look for similar functions and compare the systems in terms of topology, in terms of the effects of the interactions, and in the number of nodes, number of interactions, etc. No, we are not looking to things. You are only looking to the topology of the network. Yeah, there could be fine tuning at the, at the sequence level, but we are interested in the system level. No, but what I asked, yeah. so you said you are going to use Go annotation. Yeah, Go annotation. And Go annotations are mostly predictions and mostly sequence based. Well, one of the reasons that you are using Go annotations is because you are, you are using Unipro Go annotation that are curated. Ah, so you're using Unipro. Unipro, Unipro, yeah. Yeah. Not, not Unipro, Swissprot, but then... Oh, well, okay, okay, yeah. So you <laughs> will, will then not have annotations for the majority of your Yeah, that's a problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, well, you know, with time, you are going to have that data. We are... No. <laughs> curated <laughs> data? Uh, the, 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 I mean, the speed of increase of oh, yeah. annotations is extremely slow. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. question is, if you're going to use predictions that are sequence-based, why not focus on sequence similarity as well? Mm, could be a good idea, yeah. Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Two, two simple questions. Yeah. What, uh, how many nodes and edges have in your uh, network? Well, there is a wide difference because, uh, for example, for E. coli, macrobacterium tuberculosis, coinobacterium glutamicum, you could have a genomic coverage of around 70% of the genome size. Um, I don't know, seven, six, hundred, hundred of edge. For other networks, you have of the other, or um, I don't know, 109. 1,900 uh, nodes and, I don't know, uh, 2,000 interactions. There is a large uh, discrepancy among but networks. Yeah, but all the networks have at least 200 nodes, at least. Because in rectans base you have around 400 organisms, but we filtered much of these organisms are really, really, really small networks. So we filtered out all that networks and retained networks that could be used for large scale analysis. Yeah, yeah. In fact, in because time I didn't present, I was discussing with my students <laughs> last night about that. We have different uh, analysis. Theoretical and use it uh, high throughput expression data to validate again other other uh, models, other uh, ways to uh, identify modules, and we are recovering the most, num the, most um, the major number of systems that are enriched with uh, co-expression. Okay, in terms of it, if you compare uh, with virtual uh, randomized models. Okay. If you want, I have the slide, and in the coffee break, I could show this slide. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go for the coffee. Break. Uh, <laughs>